Hello and welcome to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'll show you how we can program the STM8S microcontrollers like this one. So this uh, is the development board for STM8S103F3P6 and we'll be using this ST link to program our board over here. So this video, I'll show you how you can get started with the ST visual desktop and the Cosmic C compiler. So sorry for the bad webcam quality, but let's uh, get into the project. Now, of course, this video is highly related to the article, which will be linked in the description of the video. The article will explain you the basics of the development board that I showed you along with its circuit diagram, few basic things. So everything can be found at the link given in the description of the videos. I'll also discuss the possible software and compiler options you have and why we selected this particular software now the link to download ST visual desktop the cosmic C compiler and few other software is provided in the link uh, again uh, the link is found in the article now, uh, now if you move down you'll also see how to uh, you know set up the cosmic compiler for the ST visual develop platform now uh, so installing is pretty much straightforward except for the cosmic c compiler for which uh, during the installation process you would have to get the license key uh, from uh, cosmic compiler itself so i'll just quickly show you uh, where i have installed and what mail i received so uh, do check it in your uh, spam files because i received my license key in the spam file only so uh, while installing it will ask you for an email id just provide the email id and as soon as you click uh, submit or there was a button called on the web so just search for cosmic and you will get a mail like this which will have a file license.c now you have to copy this file and uh, get it into the directory where you have installed the cosmic compiler i'm not getting in details of this because all of that is explained in the document so i have installed in c program files cosmic uh, stm8 and under license you will see that i have pasted my license.c file so you would also have to do the same now after that is done let me show you how to get started with the programming part open st visual desktop sorry st visual develop which is the id which we will use and let's start by creating a new workspace so in this video i'll show you how you can create a new workspace create a new project file how you can add all the standard peripheral libraries now again if you don't know what standard peripheral libraries are they are just a collection of libraries provided by st itself to easily get started with the development process again all these details i have detailedly mentioned in the article uh, and once you have created and compiled a bare minimum code, we will be uploading that code into our development board that I just showed you. And I will guide you through how to set up the environment and how to upload a basic code using the ST Visual Programmer software. So let's get started. I'm creating a new project. Now, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to create a project folder on the desktop. So let me just get directory for my desktop. Now you can save it anywhere you like, but I'm going to put it on my desktop. So I'll also create a new folder on the desktop called par minimum. Oops, is capital. And the workspace file name, I'll also give the same par minimum. Just click OK. Do you want to create it? Yes. And here it lost for the project file name. Just enter the same things again. And over here in the tool chain part, we are going to use Cosmic Compiler. There are so many options, but Cosmic is free and it works well. So we are going to use the STM8 Cosmic Compiler. And we have to, since I've already told the ID where my compiler is located, it is taking it automatically. But if you're doing it for the first time, you would have to provide the link so mine for example is in c program files cosmic fsse compilers and as under cx stm8 because it's an 8-bit uh, compiler now click on ok and here you would have to select the exact part number for the controller that we are working with just type 103 and you will find stm8 as 103 ef3 which is we are using and select click on ok and that's it so now we have created a new workspace and we have also created a project called bare minimum i'll just save it 
and if I go to the desktop, you will notice that we have created a workspace and we have created a, a bare minimum project file. Now, if I maximize it, you will see that under the source files, we already have the main uh, main C program, main C file inside it, which is now just blank. Now, what we have to do is we have to include all the standard peripheral libraries, which I told earlier. To get the libraries, I have made some changes so that these libraries would uh, work without any problems for this particular development board, that is for this particular STM8S series. To get those libraries, again, I have provided the link in the article. So I'm opening it in a Word file, but you will find it as a link in the description. Now, if you go down, you will notice, oops, I think it's covered way too down. Yes, you will notice that I have provided a link to a GitHub page. Just follow the link. Oops, sorry about that. Let me copy the hyperlink and go to the page and download it as a zip file. Now once the download is complete, we would have to extract it. I'm just putting it on my desktop. Now, if you see here, we'll have two important files. One is the include directory, which has all the header files. It, it has all the header files that you would ever need, like all the basic ones like uh, SPI, timer, UART, GPIO, configuration clock and ADC. So these are all the things that you would most frequently use. And inside the source, you will see the respective C code for those head effects. Now let me copy both these folders and I will paste it in the bare minimum project folder that we just created. Now, another important thing over here is the SPL user manual, which we will get to it very soon. Now go back to ST Visual Develop and right click here, add files and under include files is where you add all your header files. So just click control A and add all the header files. Now, if you double click on it, you'll see all the header files over here. Similarly, under source files, we can add all the C code. So here we will add all the .c files. Once that is done, to check if your compiler and if the SPL libraries are working properly, we can try building it. So if you click on this, it will rebuild everything. Let's rebuild. It will definitely take some time uh, because we are going to go through every single header file and C file and see if it is getting compiled. But this is a one time process. So once you uh, build everything, we'll just be compiling and that won't take much time. Of course, you can add only the important header files for that particular project. Say, for example, if you only need the GPIO and I2C, you can just use that. If everything is working properly, you should see zero errors and zero warnings. Now, uh, let's do something on the programming environment let me add the header file hashtag include stm8s.h i believe the syntax is correct so where is that header file yeah so stm8s.h now once we have done this and let's do a simple compile yes to all so for compiling it wouldn't take much time so once you have done this, what happens is the ST visual develop will start giving you auto suggestions, which is really cool because you don't have to remember the syntax every single time. For example, if I need to initialize a GPIO pin, I just have to press GPIO I and press control space and it will automatically suggest the possible things which is GPIO in it. So initialize and if I open a parenthesis, it's going to suggest what parameters can be uh, supplied into it. So the first thing will be a GPIO type definition and the syntax is GPIO X where you can put in the port name. For example, I will use port B and press comma. You will be taken to the next parameter where it is a GPIO pin type definition. So the syntax is GPIO underscore pin underscore. So let me do that GPIO underscore pin underscore and if you press control space again, it will tell what are the possible things. So let me do a GPIO pin five. And then again, if I press control space, 
it will tell me what I can do here. So I can either make the pin as an input, which is IN, or as an output. You have many other options here like open drain, push pull, but let's select something. I will get into the details of all the possible things that you can do with the GPIO library in the next video. But for now, let's just understand how this thing works. So um, now uh, we know how to set up the environment. We know where to write the code. Now let's see how to upload this code to a microcontroller. Now I'm just compiling it. Do we get any errors? No. So whenever we compile a program, we will notice that in our workspace under the directory debug, there are so many files because we have included so many header files. But uh, one thing that you can search for is this S19 file, which is like the hex code. So in order to program any microcontroller, uh, we'll be needing this S19 file, which will get compiled, uh, which will get changed every single time we compile the code. So now we have the bare minimum dot S19. Let's use this and program the STM module that I showed you earlier. So the connection for this is pretty simple. It's uh, it's not shown here, but again, uh, the diagram, you can find it at the link given in the description of this video. It's really pretty simple. You just have to read the names on your board over here and the respective pin names that is written on your uh, ST link uh, programmer board and just connect them as such. Once you're connected, you can simply plug in to your laptop. Let me adjust my USB camera. Now I have just plugged in to my laptop and so now what happens is uh, your board also gets the power as well as uh, the programming connection from the USB port. Uh, right now there is nothing happening on the board. So uh, let us see how to dump a code on this. To, op to program your module you have to use ST Visual Programmer which will automatically get downloaded when you download ST Visual Desktop. Just open it and when you're opening it for the first time, it might appear different. It might ask you for, you won't get this window directly. It will give you something like this where you have to select what type of programmer and what type of device you're using. So select ST link and then port will be USB. The programming mode will be SWIM and the device will be STM8S103F3. So once you have selected that, click on OK. And then over here, you will see a, a open file option. Just click on it and you have to navigate to the .s19 file. So as you can see, uh, these are called Motorola files. And uh, under the debug directory that I showed earlier, you'll have bare minimum .s19. Once you click that, you will see the hex code of your project appearing here. Now to uh, program your device, you just have to click program and current tab or you can use the shortcut control plus p when the programming is done you will see something like this over here that programming memory successfully verified and you will also see a file successfully loaded is when we loaded the hex and verifying programming area so if everything is done properly you will see this message program memory successfully verified now after that the programming is still not complete what you have to do is you have to remove the stm board so uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see, but this light has turned to red from blue. So every time if it is, every time it turns to red, it means the device is in programming mode and the output for whatever we did will not be reflected on the board. So you have two options here. Either you have to remove the device and connect it again, or you can just open this. So let me put it side by side. You have to open this and click OK again. Now, if you have noticed, this light turned to blue again and whatever program we uploaded will be starting to execute it in this development board. Now, uh, nothing is happening over here because we haven't actually written a code. In the next tutorial, I will show you how you can uh, blink a basic LED. So the board also has an onboard LED just like an Arduino. So I'll show you how you can blink this LED in the next tutorial. So the reason why I made a separate video is that uh, for every project that we're going to do, uh, we'll do the same thing. So we'll open a workspace, we'll open a project and we will include all the uh, necessary header and source files and we'll be uploading the code. So the procedure of creating a project, the procedure of compiling it and 
like the the method of adding header files everything will be same and once you have done this you can be confident that all the header files and c files have compiled successfully so it would be easy for you to use it in all the future articles so that's it i'll meet you in another video thanks for watching bye bye